All right. So I think we all know quite a bit about Nancy Brown by now. Uh, my name's Pat Squire, and I'm her partner in crime. And I got to admit, she's doing most of the work because she's putting together all these presentations. And she has great authority for doing so. Um, she has an MBA. She's taught computer software. She's been with some major corporations. She's a marketing and technology virtual assistant. And she basically runs all of this background stuff for AAUW Oregon. She's a longtime AAUW member. She kind of dropped out for a little while, but got re-recruited about three years ago and worked first with the Salem Convention. And since then, we've been partners in crime for a lot of things. And it's been a pleasure. And I've learned a lot. Nancy. All right, thank you, Pat. So today we are going to have some fun, one hopes. So I'm sharing my screen and this is what we're talking about today. We're getting started with Facebook pages and MailChimp. Huh. So we're gonna try and get through and we may also discuss Facebook groups because I actually have some stuff on Facebook groups also. So I cannot see the chat or um, the participants list. So my co-host, please, will you monitor that for me? And um, we're gonna be pretty informal. And if you have a question about everything, anything I go over, um, just shout it out. Um, I don't have very many people on my screen right now because you're all bunched up over there. And so just say your name. You know, this is Huzi Patuti from Timbuktu. And uh, this is my question. So that's what we're going to be doing. So first off, I want us to please consider something. I know we're all here to talk about Facebook pages, and I want to know why do you want a Facebook page for your branch? Why do you have a Facebook page for your branch? So please let me know um, your comments about this. Go ahead and shout out to me. Everybody tells us we're supposed to. Yeah, everybody tells us we're supposed to. We're online. So we're online. So, so we've got to have a page, yes. I think we have some in Lake Oswego, some uh, hopes of, of attracting people that way. And even when that may or may not materialize, you still are sort of publicizing uh, certain things that, that are important to us and, and important to our friends, I, I believe. And, you know, it's... Good. Just a good free form of public relations. Okay, so publicizing what's going on, what's important, good. Uh, and Nancy, uh, Nancy, Nancy Kershaw says to share information. Share information. Barbara okay. Richmond said Facebook page for publicity, events, recruiting, and, and reminders. Okay. Now, who um, said that? Barbara Richmond. Barbara, I want to know who goes to your page and sees this stuff. I'm just curious. Nancy, mm -hmm. we're a our particular branch is a 501c3, mm -hmm. and we the whole branch is not just a part of it, and we are told that we have to do public um, outreach outreach because we are a 501c3, um, and so that's why we have a, a Facebook page is okay. that it's required by the legal stuff. Okay. That's and Helen Cruz says to get younger members, which is okay. a good point. All right. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, why I have a Facebook page. The first one really have followers and fans instead of friends. That's not really a why. That's just one of the what's is when you have your personal Facebook, you have friends. And when you have a page, a business or an organization, uh, a brand can have a page, a, um, um, a celebrity can have a page, an author can have a page. So it's, it's more of a professional businessy kinds of thing. So it makes sense for AAUW to branches to, to have a page in that regard. But in, when you do have a page, you don't have friends, you have followers and fans. Um, they're all Fs, I think that's very interesting. So um, 
you provide information about the organization, and I sometimes call it a um, online brochure. That's not a really um, positive aspect because you know brochures sometimes get thrown in the garbage, and an online brochure kind of is a static thing. Sometimes people use their websites as an online brochure and doesn't get much use besides just being there. You provide project professional image. You share content that's relevant to followers. Now, as you look into what is most effective in having a page that people actually want to visit or want to see on their own timeline, that's what's relevant, relevant to someone who's a fan, has liked your page or a follower. Um, you, and so to do that, then we focus on engagement. And this is more in the business aspect, less promotional and more educational. And I'm sure that most people, most branches, I know the AUW of Oregon page has quite a bit of educational information, information that's relevant to people who have the same values and beliefs that we do. And one of the things that, that is recommended is if people comment on your page, comment on a post that you've made on your page to respond to the comments and have that interaction so that um, you get more visibility on the page. When we spoke last time about Facebook and having and what you see coming through your, your um, newsfeed, you see stuff that you interact with. If you interact with a page more, then you're going to see the posts of that page more often. So clarification, I wanted to share this. Liking a page, there's two different things you can do as someone who, who supports a page. You can like a page, um, and that means that you, you support the content and you want to see content from that page show up in your newsfeed. Um, so people who like a page automatically follow it. If you people if people like a page, they can choose to unfollow it, but they're still they'll still um, be alike, but they won't see any of the content or updates from that page. People who just follow a page may receive updates about the page in their newsfeed, but mm, who knows? People can follow a page even if they haven't liked it. So it's kind of confusing, um, but. And I can probably, mm, I'm going to stop showing my screen for a minute so I can find a website because, Lordy, I looked at all sorts of things. Does anybody have a question about what I just said about following and stuff and stuff and stuff? Well, Linda Liebecker had a question about it. Linda, did that answer uh, what you were asking? Uh, pretty much. So a fan is someone who's like the page and a follower is just someone who follows. Is that correct? Well, I'm going to show you right now. Okay. So we're, we're on my Facebook page, my, my Facebook news feed. Okay. And so I wanted to find a ad. So this is an ad for some company that, you know, it's interesting. I went to their website. And so there's a thing you can put if you're a, if you're a business and you want you want to know who's been to your website and then you can show them ads when they when you're there on Facebook. I was at this company's website the other day so they put this little code on me. It's called a pixel and now uh, they've shown me an ad because I was on their web page. So because I was on their web page I'll, I'll just click on there and go to their go to their um, this is their page and I haven't liked them. I haven't liked their page, so I could click like here and like it, and then I would be a fan and maybe, and, and I possibly see things that they post in, but they don't post very often. Well, that's their pin post. Let's see their last post was an hour ago. So they do post pretty often, but this is a product. This is a product website or, or Facebook page. Um, so I could like it or now the way they've changed things in the last couple of months, if I click the three dots, I could just follow it. So follow it means that, you know, I kind of think they're okay, but I don't know that I really care about them showing up in my newsfeed. Um, so you'll notice over on the left hand side here, they have 15,000 people like them and 16,000 people follow them. I don't know why you would want to follow a page. It, I mean, 
you know, if you like them, like them and, and don't, or don't bother. But anyway, that's my opinion. Um, but yes, liking a page, you show support for the page, following a page, you can receive updates about the page. And what I just showed you, you can follow the page even if you haven't liked it. So that's what I just showed you right here with the three dots, I could follow them. So now it says you're now following this page. You can't see that it's outside of your screen, but um, now I'm a follower, but I haven't liked them. If I liked them, I would also be a follower. That's why there's this many likes and this many follows. Does that make any sense? That make enough sense to, to move on? Sure. Great. Okay, back to here. That, oh, oh, I'm getting so clever with this. So problems with a Facebook page. All right, organic reach. Organic reach means that you as a business page show up in the news feeds of your fans or your, you have your fans of the people who have liked your page. So if I'm a business like AAUW of Oregon and I post something on the AAUW of Oregon Facebook page, only 5.5% of the people who have liked or followed my page will actually see that. This has decreased tremendously over the last number of years, mostly because um, Facebook's goal is for people to communicate with people. And this is, you know, pages are mostly businesses, but also <laughs> Facebook's goal to make money. So if I'm a business and I want to reach more people in my demographic that I am um, marketing to or that I want to participate with my page, then I'm going to have to create an ad. And in fact, that what I just went on of that big moods said sponsored under it, if you remember, let's see if it shows up again. No, nope. I don't know where it went. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that was an ad. So they saw, I went to their website, they pixelated me, I went to Facebook, and they said, aha, there's the pixel. And so we'll, we'll show her an ad. And that's how that all came about. So the problem is, if you're just posting organically, people aren't going to see, not many people that have liked your page are going to see your post. That's just kind of the way that it works right now. And another thing is, why would anyone look for your page or would anyone look for your page? Well, you know, when I have dealings with a new business, maybe a, even a dentist or a doctor or a hairdresser or a massage therapist, I go to their Facebook. I go to Facebook and see if they've got a Facebook page. And then I look to see whether anybody keeps it up. That's just my marketing um, background. But I go and see if they have a presence. So, you know, for a lot of organizations like AUW, we want to have a presence. And so that's one of the reasons, as you said, that we have a Facebook page. One of the things we need to remember is that the administrators of our page, and, and Betty does a really good job of this, need to continue to add relevant, engaging content, content that is applicable to the market that you're serving. And, and I think you all know that, right? That's pretty basic stuff. Here are ways to raise your organic page reach. Again, post high quality, engaging content that's relevant to fans. Ask fans to change their settings. Now, this is an interesting. How many of you know um, that you can, you can change what, what um, businesses show you so that you can see your favorite ones more often? Anybody know that? Peggy, Sue, Mary Pat? I can't see anybody else. <laughs> Um, so for those who don't know that, let's see, that's, my, oh, look, a 2020 points edits are now out. All right, so here's Thich Nhat Hanh. He's one of my favorite um, Buddhist, um, anyway, and so I've liked his page, and I, I've favorited 
this page. I did a little bit ago when I was testing this out. You'll see under the name of the page that it's a favorite of mine. And so if we go to that page, then we can see that I've liked it. And if I go to the three dots, <clears throat> and these are the follow settings. Oh, shoot. I have to move that. OK. These are the follow settings. So I have clicked on favorites. If I just want to see the posts in their usual order, I'll hit default. If I want to stop seeing this page's posts for 30 days, I'll hit snooze. I can turn it off if I never want to see pages uh, posts from this page, but I don't know why I would like them then. And then I can also see what choose what types of posts I want to be notified about. And then further down, oops. I can un don't do that. I can unfollow this page as well. And so I changed, let's see, I changed it, let's change it back to default and then I can update. And you can go back to my own page. And of course it's not going to show up. I hate it when it does that. All right, so. That was a way to raise, you can ask your fans to change their settings so that they can see you more often. You can run a contest, that's really big with a lot of businesses. You can add native Facebook video. What does that mean, native Facebook video? Anybody? Is that your own video that you made? It could be, um, and, but let me tell you, it is not a YouTube video. If you, if you take the link, if you're on YouTube and you copy the link for that YouTube video and post it on Facebook, that is not a native Facebook video. And you will not get as well regarded by Facebook. They used to not show them at all. Um, they do now, but you don't get very high rankings or very, um, I mean, it's not shown to very many people. So what I used to do, uh, I used to go the other way. I used to do a Facebook Live program with a client of mine, and I would then um, download that video to my computer before I uploaded it to YouTube because they did not like to show each other's videos. So that's what it means is that a, it's, a, it's a video that maybe you've made, but that you've uploaded to, to Facebook from your computer. You haven't taken it from Vimeo, you haven't taken it from YouTube, from some other platform and just put, pasted it on, on to Facebook. You can also do Facebook Live. And you know, I'm thinking in the new year, we may move some of these sessions into Facebook Lives. Um, the problem with that is that we wouldn't see each other's faces. And that's one of the reasons I don't do it. But if we have like a Q&A session and, um, I think that there's a way, this is not, I haven't done Facebook Lives for some time, that you can bring a person on camera with you to, to have a discussion on Facebook Live. So that's, that's another way that you can really get, Facebook Lives really shoot up your, engage, your engagement and the, the points in the um, system that, that Facebook uses to, to rate whether the people want to see your video or not. Facebook Live is very powerful. The other thing is be strategic to when you're spending on ads. I know some of our branches, when they promote an event or whatever, may um, spend some money on ads. And so just be strategic about which ones and how you do it. Uh, I know that in Facebook, there's a cute little button called that says boost post. And um, at least in the past, when I used to do Facebook ads, it was not recommended to do boost posts. That's a way that Facebook doesn't have to do very much work and they get your money. Uh, so there is a whole way of doing Facebook ads using the ads manager. I haven't done it for a few years, but and so I know they changed it, but you can really more narrowly target and get better return for your investment if you don't just boost the post. Any questions about that? Okay, so let's go to the AUW of Oregon Facebook page. And like I said, Betty, you do a really good job. 
So when you're administrator of a page, you get all sorts of stuff showing up before you even see the posts that have been posted. And one thing that I wanna share with you is that when you set up a page and you have an administrator, you want more than one. And, and Peggy, is Peggy on Food and Pile? Is she on? Peggy, are you with us? I know you're registered. There you are. Peggy, Penny, not Peggy, Penny. Um, did you ever did you ever get the online branches Facebook page recovered? You're on mute. No, but I figured out because I Googled it that it was restore. So I'll be working on that this week. Excellent. Google, my genie friend. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Now, one thing when you're a Facebook administrator and you don't want to see all this stuff or you want to know what it actually looks like to a normal person, you can click this view as visitor. And now I'm seeing the Facebook page just like someone that is a visitor to the page. And that will, that's, a, that's a good way to know what people are seeing. Georgia had fun creating a new cover picture. Here's something I posted the other day. I thought this was a really great article by uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's granddaughter or about her. And so if you're interested in that, go take a look at that article. Now, one thing I did want to share with you about um, posting on pages from posting other content on a page, you'll notice that this came from Harper's Bazaar but it's posted directly from AAUW of Oregon. And I did that on purpose. I found it in my newsfeed and somebody else had posted it, but I didn't want, I, I don't mean to be rude, but I didn't want to see the AAUW of Oregon and then whoever this was that posted, I, I didn't want to see all that. So what I generally do when I see an article that I really want to share with my um, AUW people is that I'll go directly to that page itself. And then I will copy the link and, and then I will create a, a, a post and then it will be an AUW of Oregon post that is clean up here and shows the, the image and then you can click here to, to go to Harper's Bazaar. Does that make any sense? Does anybody have any question about what I just mentioned? Good. Um, just, Nancy, it, yeah. one, of, one of the things as admin that I found that's been interesting exploring this position is the amount of posts that we get or the amount of likes and interest that we get or views on different posts. Hmm. It absolutely fascinates me to see what prioritizes over others that people will look at. Right. And see, we got two shares on this one. We got some likes. Um, well, if I go back to being a um, exit view as, and, and going back to being an admin on this page, you can see a lot more. Um, 61 people were reached. We had 16 engaged with this. We had two people share. We had seven likes. And if you're an admin on an, an, a page and you want to like it as yourself, see right now I'm in here as AAUW of Oregon. All I have to do is down and click that and I can find, these are all the, the things I uh, admin of. Um, I can put myself and then I can like that as Nancy Brown instead of as AAUW of Oregon. Nancy, yeah, mm -hmm. if I may ask a question, what does it mean people reached? Are those people who are following or have liked to pay? Uh, what does that mean? That's, that's the organic reach. That's how many people's pages or timelines this went to. But how many why? people saw it? Why did they, why did it go to those people? Oh yeah, they, they, they liked this page at one okay. time. That's yeah, because yeah. nice. we have, we have 359 likes and 396 followers. Right, okay. Okay. So, so why, if there are that many likes, why did it only go to so few? Well, I'll go back to my problem here, right here. Okay, all right, got it. 
So even people who have actively liked it. That's what this means. This means organic reach means of the people that have liked your page, only five and a half percent will see anything that you post. Wow. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, good. Thank you for clarification. And, and that's really a function of Facebook, right? Their, their um, algorithms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's no control we have over that? Is there any way that we can change well, that? Well, that's, that's what I was talking about, about the ways to, to increase your organic reach right here. And one of them is to engage, have people engage. For example, that, that go away. That, um, post, you know, um, if people commented on it, and then the page comments back, that that increases the likelihood of that post showing up to other to people, because it's one that people really want to see people that like our page really wanted to see that post. They should, we have two shares. And so that would increase in the visibility of this post. The Joe Biden, we reached 54 people. We had 13 engagements, one comment. Now, here's another thing I wanna share with you about the reason that I will post, go directly to the source of an article and post it directly into the Facebook page just from AUW of Oregon. It's this boost post right here. And I know I just told you not to use it, but if we wanted to, if we wanted to boost this and get more of our people to see it because we think it's really important and we got a heck of a lot of money in our budget, right? For all of this kinds of stuff, then we could do this because I have, I'm have i the one that posted this article in here. However, this one about Jill Biden, we, we shared it from somebody else. We cannot boost this post because it was shared from somewhere else. Which I think is kind of an interesting thing. Here's another one that was shared. Um, you know, And these are posts that the American Association of University Women made, which I'm not saying that's a bad place to share from, but just the fact that we shared, um, we, can't, we can't boost. Not that that's a, that's a problem because we don't, but it's just an interesting thing to know um, when you're sharing information. Oh, I didn't see this one. Women breaking the sound barrier. All right. How come that one didn't show up when I looked at the page? Yeah. Anybody have yeah. uh, else have a question about look, you're dealing with your Facebook page? You know, yeah. your statistics you can look at. There's all sorts of incredible stuff that we well, could go over if you would like to. I, I need you to, to lead me now because- yeah, this, is, this is Claudia. What, is, what does it mean when it says engagements? That's how many people have engaged with it. They've either liked it or they've or shared they com- it. Or they commented. They've made a comment on it. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? I have a question. Yes. I was trying to add um, other people to the admins and editors on our page earlier today. Mm-hmm. And they've... The, you know, one of the th- annoying things that Facebook does is change, change. where things are. Mm-hmm. Can you show me where that is? Because I looked and looked and looked today. Darn if I know. Let's look together, shall we? Okay. Yeah. Let's look over here. So that's all the follow stuff. All right. I'm going to move this a little bit and go over here. Settings. Let's try that one. Okay. Yeah. Page rolls. All right, so this is all the settings. Uh-huh. Page, uh, page rolls is what you want. Who said that? Who's the smarty pants? Thank you. Yeah, I maybe. just looked and looked and could not find it. That's because they put it way down on the bottom. Well, yeah. a little buggers. I don't know. Setting, so you went settings and then you scrolled down and found page now, rolls. Now, wait, uh, let me show you again. This is, yeah, this is the page. Slow. This is the page, okay? Yeah. And on the side, it says settings. Settings, yeah. And then I clicked on settings and these are all the oh, settings. Right there where you're, yeah, okay. And settings. there's page rolls. Okay. So page rolls, and then you can assign a new page roll. Okay. Yeah. Somebody wanted to know who was on there and I looked and looked. I was on the phone with her and I said, I can't find it right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now I'll be able to find it. <laughs> Georgia, how come you're not listed here? I am. 
No, you're not. You should be scrolling. I did. That's as scrolling as I can get. Oh, I should be. Maybe I you're A U W of Oregon. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Huh. No, that was a good question. Who asked that question about set, you know, page rolls? Who asked that question? I did. Okay. Barbara. Barbara, yeah. thank you so much. Anybody else have a nitty-gritty question like that? Let's let's deal with those right now. I I have a question, but probably, I mean, maybe you're gonna get to this. <clears throat> I know that little symbol at the top of pages it looks kind of like a bear claw and it's groups. And then oh, this thing, yeah, yeah. It shows all the all the groups that you belong to. Well, it, it shows it shows the groups that you belong to that have posted recently. Right. The and most that, recent posting. That is inclusive. I mean, it'll it will. That's not a limited, random five point five percent kind of thing. If you groups <clears throat> are totally different. Groups are totally different mm -hmm. than pages. Okay. Oh, no, it's not. I was okay. just wondering about the usefulness, though, of groups. If you wanted to have somebody ask me today about having a place where private communication could take place that wasn't public, like a Facebook page was. Yeah. And I was wondering about the usefulness of perhaps having a group for your chapter. I am so glad because groups was not the next topic. You guys are so oh, good. Oh, okay, good. Okay. <laughs> so right now, we're not a group. We're just a page. Is that what you're saying? Well, what we were on is a page. We also have an Oregon Facebook group. Um, AAUW Oregon is a group or a page? Both. We have both. It, uh, okay. This okay. one, this <laughs> one. Yes, we have both. Yeah. Just a second. Let me go back. Hi. Hi, cutie. Hi, you. This one right here is our page. This is the AAUW of Oregon Facebook page. What do you think? Are you a Zoomster? Okay. Okay. So I will take us now. It'll take me a minute. So close your eyes. This is the AUW of Oregon Facebook group. Hmm. See, AUW of Oregon group. <laughs> it's got a, a Zoom picture that we took from last summer as our cover photo. There are only 74 members. We want people to join. And this is exactly, Barbara, what you want to do. Facebook has changed up how groups work lately. And so there used to be three different kinds of groups, private groups, public groups, and secret groups. They took away secret. So a private, a public group is anybody can join and anybody can see who is in, in your group. So it's kind of like hanging out with just your underwear on. A private group is um, you, there might be some hurdles to joining. Like for this one, if you want to join, um, you have to tell me what your branch is or tell us what your branch is. That's your hurdle. I haven't, sometimes, you know, people, you, you, you ask to join, you have to answer some questions and then you actually have to be allowed in by an administrator. Right. Um, so when I set the Facebook group up, I did not do that because I didn't want to have to be letting people in all the time. Well, I thought we were all going to run to the group, um, which didn't happen. So, um, so because we're, ours is a private group, it says that right here, only members can see who's in the group and what they post. So yes, we can have private conversations amongst ourselves in this group. And this is the way I think, well, unfortunately not all of our members are uh, on Facebook. But this is a great way, I think, for people to share ideas, share what they're reading, you know, the, the books that we're reading and the anti-racism uh, series. Um, you know, we could really, I mean, get involved uh, and talk more because of some of the things about groups. So let's talk about a group. Why have a Facebook group? You know, you, if you paid any attention to the way I'm doing some of these series, I have a big question about why we're doing whatever we're doing. So why do you want to have a group? Well, you have a Facebook group to connect around a common interest. 
common values, common, you know, I'm in, I'm in probably over a hundred groups. I don't pay attention to most of them, but many of them were for classes that I was taking or there's some novel series that I love, you know, and there's a group, there's one that takes place in the 1920s in LA and that gal posts all sorts of pictures from the twenties and it's really fun. Um, so, so it's really a kind of a fun, um, there's another group uh, of, a, of a novel novelist that I, that I like to read. And she um, ended up in the hospital a few weeks ago in I, intensive care. She wasn't, didn't have COVID, but uh, in the Facebook group, the, people kept posting updates on how she was doing. And, and this, is a, this is a woman who, who puts out new ebook um, every three months. And so December 21st, where we were due to have the next one, but now that I know that she's in the hospital and now she's in rehab, we're not gonna get the December one. Um, that's really nice to know that. So in the Facebook group, everyone can comment and share, create a topic of discussion. In, on a Facebook page, only the admins can, can make the posts. Um, you'll see on a, oh, I'm not on a page anymore. Let's go back to Facebook and the Facebook page. Um, no, that's not what I wanted. Uh, but anyway, um, it's only the admins can make these posts. Other people can comment, anybody can comment, but only the admins can make the posts. And, and if you make a comment on a page that's, you're trying to start a conversation, I don't even know where your comment ends up, but it's kind of in the back and only the admins can see it. Um, so if you're on a page and you're not an admin and you wanna talk about something else, good luck, okay? But if you're in a group and you want to and you want to talk about something, you want to create a topic, you want to share something, you want to post a picture, you can do that. Um, a, a group, as I said, can be private or public. Your personal security settings, I just learned this today, apply to groups. I'm not quite sure what that means, but um, I know that we talked about security settings when we talked about Facebook the other day, and um, you want to make sure that your security settings are how you want them in your personal profile and then those apply to groups and who can contact you and and that sort of thing uh, outside of the group. I'm not used to typing so much. The Facebook group is a more engaged and focused environment than pages and as you notice you know on your Facebook yeah, the bear cloth the bear paw that that I was asked about that will show the most recent posts in the various groups. When you make a comment on a Facebook page, group, when you make a comment or like something or uh, comment on a post, that turn, takes that post back up to the top because that's the most recent uh, interaction in that group. So that's kind of interesting too. Any, com any other questions about groups? Yes, I, see, I think yes. I think originally the group was set up by yourself and Georgia to try to encourage some interaction. Has that been working? No. I haven't seen a whole lot of interaction no. with no. them. Because I haven't really had a lot of time. Um, Mary Pat, thank you for sharing this. Um, Oregon Society of Artists. Um, Claudia has made comments. Um, Karen thanked us. That's very nice. Thank you. Um, there's my dog. Nancy? Yes. Would you review exactly how one joins the group? You said there were 74 people that were members of the group. All right. I will definitely do that. And one of the yeah, ways. Because I tried to join. I couldn't figure out how to do it. Okay. One of the ways, my dear lovely people. I will show you this. Yes. Do you does this email look familiar? Yes. Uh, well, it's the advertisement. Oh, already. darn. I don't have it on here. Um, I sometimes stick it on the emails. Let's see. What are you doing? I will put it in the chat if I can find chat. Well, you know, here's an easy way. This is a really easy way. All right. Look up here. 
see what the name of this group is? AEW of Oregon. So when you're in Facebook, search Facebook, AAUW of Oregon group. And it will take you to this. AAUW of Oregon group, click on it. And I don't, I don't know what it says if you're not a member, it might say join. At one point you had a join button, but I can't find it anymore. You had a place on the page for joining as well. All I see now is an invite. Button. Honey, that's because you're an admin. Well, we need to have a place for a join for somebody who well, wants to. Well, it might be. I don't know. You and I are both members. I don't know what it looks like if you're not a member. Right? Well, maybe someone will tell us. Unless we can view as a visitor. And we'll see. I don't know if you can on a group. We'll Let's put see. it on the page. I thought it was on the page. No, it's not. Okay. Well, write it down and send me a note. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to remember. Mind like a sieve, huh? Okay, I just joined. It was really easy. If you're not a member, you can see the join group button. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just hit it, and so now I'm in it. So oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Oh, good. And I did have to scroll down through the search about four or five or six before I found the AAUW of Oregon group. Mm -hmm. So if you don't see it right away, be diligent because it is there. And Barbara, it just popped up in my news feed that you asked to join the AEW group. So good. <laughs> got it. Well, now got I'm it. stuck. Okay. This is Sheila. The other thing you can do is click on the three little dots off to the right and the menu that the drop down will say leave group, which made me assume that I must be a member of the group if I can leave right. the group. So yeah, there you go. It knows you. Have, excuse me. Right. If I may have a question. I mean, yes, I posted something on there. It was not related to AAUW. It's just about this woman friend of mine in Oregon and Portland. Um, is that appropriate? I really wasn't sure if if this is if our group page is only supposed to be AAUW stuff, or oh. if we can share other things. You know, Mary Pat, I thought it was very nice. Um, I haven't written the rules. I was supposed to do that when I traded the group. And to be honest, I totally forgot. Um, and I think that it was of interest. Good. OK, good. And if people disagree, they can say, you know, I, I don't know that this is pertinent. OK, I yeah. thought it was of interest. So good. Good. Yeah. Thanks. OK, great. Well, um, I, I have a problem in that. It says searches related to AAUW of Oregon group. And it doesn't give join. I'm sorry? It doesn't give the option to join. It just says special projects fund. What does AAW stand for? You're on a website. It sounds like you're at um, AAUW National. I'm at AAUW of Oregon group. That's what I'm typed into the uh, search bar. Okay, and so what does it say now in your browser? Um, it, what does it say up here? Right here, what does it say? It's at the top, it's as advocates for equal equality, it behooves us as an AAUW of Oregon members to recognize and speak against racism. No, 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 would you? Who, who's talking, please? Ellen. So Ellen. Me, Ellen, would you look at my screen and tell me what's in your browser it. bar? Okay, let's see. Just a second. Well, she's just on the regular web page. Yeah. Okay. Well, what am I looking for? What I have highlighted in blue right here. Highlighted in blue. What's at the top of your, what does your browser say? What's the address that you're at right now? A, a, you, oh, a, are you talking about your share page or are you talking no, about? No, I'm talking about whatever page it is you're on. ATTP, HTTPS slash slash WW. What are you on? What page are you on? AAUW of Oregon Group. No. Does it say Facebook? AAUW of Oregon Group? 
Oh, I should be Facebook. Maybe that's the problem. Uh, oh, face. I'm not in Facebook. That's no, you're not. Button. This is what it should say right here. Looking. Oh, 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 sorry. Facebook.com. Sure. I could do that. Sorry. Anybody else? I am actually going to leave the world of Facebook because we need to talk about MailChimp and I've only got 15 minutes. Hot huh, Ilga. Um, I have a comment regarding the AUW of Oregon group. Okay. If you, uh, it, I several times typed in group. You need to put in groups with an S. Um, oh, right here. Facebook.com slash groups with an S right. slash AAUW of Oregon. And I kept getting, this link is broken. So be sure you put in the S. Thank you, Ilga. Thank you. See, I never go up there. I always just search in, search in Facebook. So thank you. If you, if you want to write the whole URL, yes, you need the groups. Thank you. Any other questions or comments about Facebook groups or pages or something? Yes, our next lesson will be on how to do ads. <laughs> no, not. Okay, so I am, I'm going to be done with Facebook. And now I'm going to turn us to MailyChimp. And thank you to Ilga for doing this presentation last, well, a summer and a, a year and a half ago. Now, MailChimp, what is MailChimp? Anybody want to tell us? It's essentially right. a group that you use to to email out a lot of different um, posts to one group of people. So sort of. It's a it's yeah, an sorry. email system. It's an email um, provider. It's a and and okay. I'm just going to say why use is an email system so that it's the caveat here is that all the email systems mostly are created for businesses. So there are going to be some things within MailChimp that we're not going to want to use. Uh, so, so I just want you to know that sometimes it might be confusing um, because it's a marketing and an email marketing system. So here is why would we use a system like this, uh, like MailChimp. And so I've got my little list and then I've got a couple of the people who really do a really fantastic job doing MailChimp for their branch for their branch communications. And so they've given me their uh, input as well. But for one thing is email volume. Back in the day, maybe eight, 10 years ago, email providers such as Outlook or Gmail, I don't think Gmail even was around then, but if you sent out from your email, personal email, you couldn't send more than, well, if you sent more than 50 emails in a bundle together, um, you might, they might not arrive. You might not be able to do that anymore. That was really not a good, a, a good technique. These days, uh, I'm in looking this up. I found that Gmail will allow you to send 500 at a time or in one day. So you know you can do that, but it's kind of cumbersome to, to put all of your contacts in a because you want to put them in a BCC, you don't want to share everybody's email address with everybody else. That is very poor email etiquette. Um, so we want to have good email etiquette, even if we're not using MailChimp, and don't share everybody's email addresses with everybody else, especially if it's people that don't know each other. In AUW, we know each other. We, you know, we we generally have each other's email addresses. But if you're just sending it to your random friends, please do not put my email in there along with 10, 20 of your other friends. Um, that's just that's just etiquette as far as email. So email volume. So email service providers like MailChimp are built to handle large numbers of email. And our email, we have about a thousand that I send out for AAW of Oregon in this, in, for our, our continuing ed series. 
And that's very small potatoes for an email service provider. And in fact, that's why we use MailChimp because we get it for free for under 2000 um, subscribers. There's some things being a free account we can't do, but it, it works pretty well for what we use it for. So in terms of speed and size, using a internet service provider, I mean, an email service provider like MailChimp is much faster, easier to get things out than having to do it out of our personal email system. An email client, which is like Outlook, Gmail, and corporate mail servers have limitations on the number of recipients that can be included on an email and how many emails you can send in a period of time. With an email system like MailChimp, we can manage our list and we can personalize the emails. Now, I think that's a key. Because if you're sending out 50 uh, email, an email to 50 different people in your, in your branch, you can't say, dear Helen, dear Peggy, dear Sharon, dear Mary Pat. You can't say that because the same thing's going to every one of them. You'll notice, I hope, that the email that I sent to remind you about this to sign up had your name on it. Is that, do you notice that? So it said, when, when I remember, I, I know that I've forgotten a couple of times, but when I remember, there's a code that I use and it says, dear, and it says to put your first name there. I could put your last name there and say, dear Silverman, dear Ross, dear Klump, but that would be kind of tacky. So I put the first name one in there so that it goes to, and it, it addresses you like we're talking one-on-one. -on -one. And, and another email etiquette is that when you write an email, to a bunch of people, you only you write it as if it's going to just one person because one person is reading it. And so that's a very basic email marketing or email whatever piece of, piece of uh, awareness. So email tracking. And I know that Randa and Nancy Cheverton use this way more than I do. And so they'll mention it in their comments. Effective email design. Again, they use a much more gorgeous email than I do. I just like putting pretty pictures on mine and making it mostly white space. Um, but the, we can use HTML and we don't need to know code, but they, some of one of them, I don't know if it's Rand or Nancy or both of them, they know more code than I do. And so they can do some, you can go in and code those emails to make them look even nicer. Um, and I copied one of their things one time and cause we were sending out a similar thing. And so I went into the, their HTML and copied it um, and figured out what they had done. But I don't wanna have to do that if I don't. Here's another thing. We're sending out emails in mass to a bunch of people. Now we're not marketing. And so the can spam law, it really doesn't apply because we're not trying to sell stuff. And this is about, I can't remember, but it's something against pornography as well. We're not sending out pornography, but there are a lot of laws <clears throat> and regulations around sending out email, especially emails to a large number of people. And so the thing I like about using a system like like MailChimp is that they know what those laws are and they help, uh, they, they help us stay uh, within the guidelines. Oh, I forgot to highlight this. Wait a minute, let me fix this. There. There's an unsubscribe process and subscription management, which is we don't have in our just sending out an email to, to our, um, our branch members. And so on the email itself, it says, you know, don't want this. And you see this all the time from emails you get from, from businesses, for example, you can unsubscribe. And, and people do that. Every time I send out one of these things, I get one or two or four or five people unsubscribing because they don't care about what we're doing with continuing ed. And, and that's fine with me. And actually it makes me cry, but you know, it's still fine because it's, it's up to the people to, to choose what comes into their inbox. Now, one of the things I want to share that's different with us, how we do MailChimp and how most businesses do. We do not have a sign up form on our website for people to sign up to get on our newsletter or to get on our mailing list. What we do is we use the mailing list or we use the list of people who are members. 
And I just yesterday went through and deleted 139 people out of my mailing of this mail, my mailing MailChimp mailing list, because I got uh, information from Ginny and then Ilga that they had not resubscribed or re-upped, what is it, rejoined? They're no longer members of AUW, so I renewed. needed to take them off. Renewed. <laughs> okay, they did not renew. Thank you. Um, so I had to take those out of the list. So they did not get the, the follow-up email that I did last night to remind you about today. So they no longer will get emails from me. Now, we have two separate email MailChimp lists for with AUW of Oregon. ILGA manages the kind of the official one, and I manage the fun one. <laughs> um, the one that is about the continuing ed series. So some people uh, opt out of the, my continuing ed one, they're still going to get the email from ILGA that is more pertinent to uh, AAW business like the Oregon News, et cetera, et cetera. Because they opt out of mine, the one that I send does not mean that they're not gonna get their Oregon News. Any questions about any of this? I'm talking way too much. <coughs> uh, Nancy, this is Mark Maggie. Um, I sell. I belong to lots of organizations, and I have my own little email list. And sometimes they come back, uh, not, you know, something's wrong. And I've found out that sometimes AOL has to agree to accept emails uh if it's in if i'm emailing to an aol.com person that they won't accept it you have you ever run uh run into that <clears throat> let me just say that aol well, and some MSN other and there are several there are several that are fussy that's why you would use a system like mailchimp they're less fussy um, because MailChimp is a, they've been around for 18 years. They're well known, they're professional. Um, and Margaret, what is, what again is where yours comes from? What's the name of your, you're on mute. Moose Bites. Moose Bites, see, so um, I love you dearly, but Moose Bites may sound more like a spam um, than MailChimp does. Well, um, uh, it's a two, I'm in the populated area of North Idaho. <laughs> um, I'm being facetious. And um, this is the only uh, computer uh, email that works up here. Oh, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying no, that. I'm just no. saying that that is part of the reason. Well, it's a two-tiered thing. It's AirPipe in Spokane and they spam search there and then they send it to Priest Lake. So, um, but that's, that's not uncommon for AOL and other uh, email systems um, to reject things. It's, it's not uncommon. Exactly. I can't tell and you I, what to do about it. I can't tell you what to do about it. Yeah, Maggie, I get that with my agents, with my clients sometimes that it'll go into their spam. So they'll call me and say, hey, Sue, I didn't get the email with whatever it was you were sending me. And they find it in spam and they have to let their system know that it's okay to accept emails from right. myself, myself and my agency. But it's kind of a one-on-one -on -one situation and vice versa. Sometimes I'll get my client's emails into my spam and I have to accept them into my system. Yes, that, that's how our system works. And so that's automatic to go look at the spam on both levels, air pipes and moose bites. This is when they reject and they come back to me saying undeliverable. So Nancy, Linda Liebecker has a question about whether the Oregon News goes out to every member. Some There are a lot of national members in the state that don't belong to a branch. And Linda wants to know if the Oregon News, I guess it's really a question for Ilga, uh, goes out to those people or whether you have to be a branch member. Ilga? Is she still with us? 
Yeah, she's muted. Yoga, you're muted. She sent an answer in chat, I think. Ah, oh, got it off. Um, you know, I have technical difficulties sometimes. Um, the national members do not get the Oregon News. It is titled the Oregon News and it goes to our uh, Oregon members. Um, the other comment that I made was in order to be a member of AUW of Oregon, you have to belong to a branch. Mm -hmm. Those things are not separate. You don't have the choice of joining uh, any, just any one of the three entities. You can join national without <coughs> having a state or a branch, but you cannot, and you, if you join a branch, you must also join the state. And I think also in the past, we have found that the national members, even though we may have their email address, those email addresses are old because they may have joined national some time ago and just have never updated their information. Well, that's a possibility. But I think that our, our generally speaking, what we put out in the Oregon news is probably not of interest to them. But keep in mind, national members uh, are receiving all of the emails from national. Right. And you know right. that there are quite a few. And so um, I just don't see that they would be that interested. If they were interested, they would seek us out, I believe. So in our district directors at, at the different times have tried to reach out to all the national member at larges in their territories and um, try to different ways to get them to join the state and branches. So that's always an option, but you're right, they're not members of AEW of Oregon. And, and just for clarification, because it, it, it may have been misinterpreted yes. so that you can join, you can be a member of state without being a member of a branch. You don't have to join a branch to be on the state. First time I've heard of that, Pat, I know, like, I know people do that, that. You know, I thought that used to be the case, but I, that's what I wanted to do when I came back. And that's why I joined the online branch because I thought that's what that meant. And I, cause I didn't want to join a branch. And I, I was told that you can't do that anymore. That's interesting. Then maybe some people are grandfathered in because we all know a uh, past state president who is not a branch member. Okay. State member. We'll have to check with her because I think she belongs to the online branch now this year. Not now, but she hasn't. Last, hasn't. yes, last year she was not a member of a branch, nor the year before mm -hmm. she was a state member only. But I think the rules did have, in fact, changed. Oh, that's good to know. Perhaps we could have Ginny Didium check into that and confirm it for us. So I am at the top of the hour and just getting started with MailChimp. I knew I shouldn't have done two of them in one. Um, so what is your pleasure? Do how many people have joined this wanted to learn? Well, number one, I didn't talk about how to create your own Facebook page. Um, how many people wanted to learn how to create their branches Facebook page? Please raise your hand. Okay. So, so you did want to learn how to do that. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is on the recording for this that I promise I will get up in the next week or so, maybe, um, I have a whole list of, of places for you to go to learn how to create a Facebook page that I was going to share and then I decided we needed to move on. So let me find my share screen and I'm going to show this to you. And it's, it's a uh, I've got the links already written down that I will give to you, but it takes you step by step by step. It's really quite nice. And over here, and it's, it's help, Facebook help. <clears throat> I used, guess what I used to find this? Anybody, you know the answer. I Googled Google. it. Google, yeah. Google. I said, how do I create a Facebook page? <clears throat> Google told me, here, go to Facebook help. So it goes, how do I create a Facebook page? And then the next one is, is uh, the next link is this. And it, it takes you through, you know, you need to know what your name's gonna be. You need to know what category you're gonna be in. Type something to get started. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so, oh my gosh, they really changed things. Um, so let's call it organization, community organization. Okay, that's a good one. We're a community organization. 
I wouldn't say nonprofit. You could if you want. Only of the 501c3 ones, I'd really say nonprofit. Community organization, is that what we have the Facebook page as? We are nonprofits. C4s are nonprofits. I know that, but I don't know that I would put that as my, what kind of page we are. Uh, uh, that's what we put. It is it? Huh. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to look. I'm going to look. Well, we're just not a charitable one. Yes, I know, but that's what most people consider. That's what most people think of when they, when they think of nonprofit. So about, it tells us about, so we are a community organization nonprofit. So that's how we were, we were listed in the AUW of Oregon. So the first thing was community organization. And that's what I would recommend, but that's just me. So it's got this cute little thing and they didn't have this when I created a bunch of Facebook pages. So this is fun because you can put your pictures in and you can do, you got to name your page, of course. Uh, and so it just walks you right through. So again, I have the links for all of these different pages, but you can just follow right through over here um, and follow their directions. How do I create a username for my Facebook page? Because um, we can create a username for our Facebook page. I haven't gone through to do that. So you can easily go through here. And I would ask that you get started. And if you have questions, email me or Georgia. Georgia set up the Facebook page. You know, we've got a couple people that know how to do this stuff. Other people in other branches that have Facebook pages, I'm sure they'd be willing to help. Yeah, I created the Facebook page for AAUW Grants Pass. So she's got lots of experience. Anybody have another question about this creation of Facebook pages? I will tell you that they've done so much better than when I, I created a bunch of pages about eight years ago, six years ago, and their instructions were horrible. So this is real, they walk you right through, it's wonderful. All right, so uh, I've, I've just got some why use MailChimps. Um, Randa, is Randy in Tiger? Yes. Randa, you're in Tiger? Okay, good. Yes. Cause I get, Nancy sent me hers too and I couldn't remember which one was Tiger and which one yes. was Portland. She's Tiger. Okay, so um, Randa said some really great things. She used, likes MailChimp because the reader doesn't click on anything more than the email. The, you open the email and there it is. Uh, easy statistics. <clears throat> you can, and this is what, sh what they do that I don't do. You can send the email to those who didn't click on it originally. You can make a replica and send it again as a reminder. So um, I'm losing my voice. Maybe I don't want to be here for another half hour. Nancy, it's, it's Claudia. I'm a dual member of that branch. And Randa is really good about this. If I don't click on that first email, I get the next one from her. In effect saying, did you get this? Please don't you want to respond? She's really, really good. Good, good. And they're, all, and they're always... Um, interesting in the way they are written and the way they look she's very, yes she's yes. very professional yes they're very they're gorgeous um thank you for that claudia oh there you are i'm glad i thought maybe you'd left yes you're really good thank you so um all email addresses are not shown uh, as I was talking about earlier, um, so you don't have to blind copy your database. Once you have your database, you can tag a group. You don't need separate databases. Um, I often do that to, to send stuff out depending on if I'm wanting to see, I've got a thousand people to go through and tag. So that kind of gets to be a pain in the patoots. If there's 30 of you that have just decided to join my class, um, I have to find you in the thousand to tag you. Um, but anyway, MailChimp is a recognized platform. Fewer, fewer emails go into spam, bulk email, or whatever it's called. Um, and you have made several templates so that members can recognize the branding. And I think that's brilliant. Nancy has written, written a whole bunch of, um, we have set up our, and so she kind of has taken us through what we're going to go through. Set up our account using our Gmail address. Now, I want you to know that I think this is interesting because back when I set up um, a MailChimp account <clears throat> a few years ago, you, they, they were not allowing email addresses as the from. 
So I made a comment about that when, when we went to do MailChimp for AEW and now they're allowing it. So that's good because now that this, this works. Um, a few years ago when I did this for a client of mine, the email, Gmail address was not an acceptable email to be using for MailChimp. Um, so we, you create a Gmail account, a uh, Gmail address and a password that is shared with only members of the communication team. All right. And we're, we're, that's how Ilga is taking us through in, the, in this uh, PowerPoint. MailChimp is web-based, can be accessed by anyone who has the login credentials to write the emails. So, and we have a centralized mailing list rather than having it on somebody's computer, which is lovely, right? If you're in the past, oh, who's got the, who's got the list of all the emails? This is now a MailChimp hazard. The ability to update the mailing list with updates from the national database. <clears throat> the ability to add and update members to the mailing list outside of the upload process. So all of those things you can do within MailChimp. Wow, that's really good. After the upload process, which I'm not gonna teach you how to do, but I can do that um, with you personally if you need the assistance, you can, oh shoot. You can uh, always Google it <laughs> and, and MailChimp has a good help. <clears throat> Let's see, after the up, we receive reports on how many were accepted, if there were any problems with the email, et cetera. So that allows us to review and correct. When we send out an email, MailChimp reports tells us how many were delivered, how many bounced, that's right. And we mentioned that earlier. Um, and then they let their membership VP know if there's a potential problem with an email address. And this has allowed us to clean up both the national and our own database. And MailChimp reports produced after each email uh, campaign tells us how many people opened, how many clicked the different links, it gives us insight into what is drawing people's interest and, and whether or not they're interested at all to what I've noticed online. Um, they use a tag feature to segment who receives what. For instance, they have a segment called board members. I had a segment uh, last year called branch presidents that I sent something for, oh, it was about the summer meeting that we had in um, Monmouth. Is that where we were? Yes. Uh, when we, 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 yeah, when we wanted to remind people to renew, we created a segment not renewed so that we could send that reminder to those members. Um, and templates. People have set up templates. Um, MailChimp is user-friendly and can use add graphics, color, etc. Okay, so my next slide is be aware. Again, I already mentioned this. MailChimp is a business application. Many of its features are focused on business. So to get started on with MailChimp, and where is my mail? Okay, so get a mail, get your mailing list, have your branch president or finance officer download your membership list from the MSD on the national website. It will be in a format that's called CVS. Elena, what's CVS stand for? It's CSV, isn't it? Yeah, it's CSV actually. Comma separated. Comma separated values. And it looks a lot like Excel. Then you could read it in Excel. You can edit the data then by removing the unnecessary columns. Keep, keep email and the name list. And for what I do, I keep the branch. So you need the name first and last. Put them in, you want them in separate columns. Hopefully that's the way they come, I don't know. Um, the email, and then I keep a branch uh, column as well. Again, as was said by Nancy, set up the Gmail address for your branch, if you don't already have one, and decide together with your board, whomever, what your address will be, because this is what is going to be sending the emails. So for example, tiger at AU, gmail.com. I uh, use, what do I use? I use a couple of them. Um, decide on the password, share that among the people that need to know, and go to Google Mail, or in set up your account. Setting up in MailChimp, go to the MailChimp site, which is MailChimp.com. 
and I'm going to show you a picture. I had to change the pictures out because they've updated and changed their website. <clears throat> so click on the free on the sign up free in the upper right corner. And I didn't draw a picture on here. Let me draw. Sign up for free right here. All right. And what did it say? Enter your email, username, and password that you have selected to use. So sign up for free. And then we go to this. Welcome to MailChimp. Give us your email. Give us the username. That's whatever AAUW branch or Lake Oswego AAUW, whatever you want to call it. Here's your password. Here's the rules for password, you know, your special characters and all that. By clicking the sign up button, you're creating a MailChimp account and you agree to MailChimp's term, uh, terms of use and privacy policy. You might want to check those out. Okay, so you can log in. I, I saved, the, I kept this one except I changed this because this is what's different <laughs> from the new one and the old one. So when you, when you then go ahead and go in, you give them your username, your password, you log in. So to upload Nancy, your- Nancy, did you, on the username, um, that looked like they're just using the basic, the same as your email address? Yeah. yeah. So no, you don't need a, another, no. another username. Yeah, it's, um, a different, it's a different username. It's, it just didn't show. Uh, oh, it's, okay. it's, it's um, a Tiger Day, Tiger Day AUW, I think we used it. I just can't remember, but I think it's something different. Maybe Randa knows. But you could actually use just the, just the email. I don't remember either because it does it automatically. <laughs> Um, for ours, let's see, ours is, a, I don't know why it's got a 19 on it, AUW, Oregon AUW 19. I must have created it in 2019. I have no idea. So that's what we use with the AUW of Oregon one that I'm doing. But you would have put the username here when you started. You would have put your email, your username, and your password. Possibly the reason you don't want to use your email for your username is that that's more um, likely for people to guess to maintain the security of your um, MailChimp account. Okay, so if we want to, up now we want to upload your email address, and I don't think I go through that in here, um, but I do show you how to go about doing it. Now, MailChimp has now created on the side is their cute little icons for the different things that you do. So when you, when you log in, I should have put this here. That's what we'll do. No, put this here. There we go. When you log in, this is what you get. And so it's telling me, you know, some of my latest and greatest stuff. Um, and so over here on the side are the icons for the various functions that I can do. So now I'm gonna upload the email address or the address list. And so we'll go to this second, third button and hit click on audience. Then we get this page. You'll notice it says up here on the left audience dashboard. And these are the options here in the audience dashboard but I really just wanna go over here to where it says manage audience. Let me move this a little bit. Manage audience and the drop down. this is the drop down list of manage audience and we are going to import contacts. And that's as far as I went because I didn't have any contacts to import. So if you get that far and can't figure it out, let me know, okay? Nancy, can you import your contacts from your email? I mean, for, for example, I'm curious, I use my Yahoo groups to do like branch presidents or whatever groups I create, and then I'll BCC my emails. Would this be easier to do than the way I'm doing yeah, it? Now? You can't import them that way. They have to be in a CSV file. Okay, so it doesn't import from my email into So I would have to create them individually. I don't think Got so. It. Let me look. I could Google it. Well, I'll go into the account and see. Okay. 
Okay. I'm just wondering if this is an easy avenue for me to use for all my group emails that I do, that Pat and I do. Um, you can upload a CSV file or you can copy and paste from a spreadsheet. I'm not sure what that looks like. Paste your contact information in this field. And so it looks like you could paste the email, paste the name. You, I don't do address. You, um, it wouldn't, yeah, so you could. It uh, doesn't have a place for you to add a, another column. It might um, once you started email adding. Well, you could do that more under your own. Control. I'm sorry, I can't hear. Who, Aunt Elena? Yeah. Hang Where's on. your microphone, girlfriend? There it is. You you could do that on more under your own control by and without them watching you by just putting it into the spread, your own spreadsheet yourself and then on your spreadsheet under export it'll export to a csv file for you you don't need to export you, you can you can do it from a yeah, x uh an excel file i've done it just from excel so you can just do that locally pushing and pulling you know yeah. copy and paste copy and paste into your own spreadsheet yeah but if she doesn't want to do that that's all we're saying. She doesn't want to do that. I just want what's easiest. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but it all sounds right. like it wouldn't be. It sounds like it wouldn't be too challenging, Elena, to do what you're saying to copy and spread my contacts into a spreadsheet. No. Import the spreadsheet into this. Yeah. I could do that. That's the, no. Normally, I do. I do it that way. I've, what What do they want? And I make what they want, and then I give it to them. Okay. So that's importing your contacts. Contacts, creating an email. Dun, da, da, da. Come on. All right, don't. So again, we've got our little, uh, I want to call him a mouse, our little chimp. <clears throat> uh, that's our, our menu is along the left-hand side. And now we just go to the second one and it's create. And we get the kinds of things that we can create. And we're going to create an email. And see, look, create an email. <laughs> I used your Ilga's because this is one what, what she shared, and she created the. You got to name your campaign. So every time you send out an email to a bunch of people, it's called a campaign. And we have to learn new vocabulary, and that's the way it is here. It's a campaign. So we have to name our campaign. So this was the name of her campaign. And then she hit begin and then came to here. Okay, and you can edit your name of your campaign by editing edit name. And then we need to add the recipients. Who are you going to send this to? And when you click that, it'll say, okay, you've got this list. Um, do you have have you have you segmented your list? You have different names for people like this is branch presidents or this is district directors or this is whatever. Um, who do you want to send it to? I have one just called AAW all because <laughs> that's how I send the ones that I send out to say, OK, here's this month's uh, continuing ed from who's sending this. It's from whoever. What's the subject line? OK, so the name of the campaign is different than the subject line or it can be because this is what people are gonna see in their inbox, the subject line. This, uh, this, this name here, the campaign name is for you. When, when you have a list of campaigns, that's the name. I always put the date on mine so that I know when I sent this out, when I'm looking at the list of campaigns. And then content is you're gonna design the email. So let's take the next one and see what we do. So Ilga, who are you sending this to? Her audience was Tigered Area AAW paid. Oh my goodness, she's got good audience paid. And the segment, all subscribers in the audience. The personalized, and then when you're sending to, you have this opportunity to personalize this to field. And this is what I talked to you about earlier, is that you can say, dear Nancy, dear Claudia, or hi Claudia, or hi Marie, instead of, you know, high branding or high you know, Wil Wicklin or High Drummond, you use their first name. So this is the merge tag for first name right here. 
This is HTML. You don't have to know it. You'll have a list. We'll drop down and you just choose the one that looks like first name. If, unless you don't want to call them by their first name. <laughs> okay, next is the subject. Again, we talked about the subject. What's the subject line for this campaign? Okay, and she said urgent, protect Title IX. And then a preview text, which I still don't understand what this is. It said it appears in the inbox after the subject line. I've never noticed, but I don't have that kind of an <laughs> inbox. And so you just put a little more information about the, the subject. I mean, I always put that in, but I don't know if you ever see it. Do you guys ever see it? I haven't noticed. I haven't either. I haven't noticed. I've never done it. <laughs> we'll start looking. Yeah, we're going to start looking. We're going to start looking. I so, put it in. I put it in because it's the teaser. Yeah, but I don't know where it shows up. I put it in too, but I don't know where it shows up. I think it, it might, up I, it might depend on the email program that's receiving it. No, I know that, but I get I get the emails too, and I never see it. So well, that's what I'm trying to say. like I'm saying, if you got an, an Outlook or you know some proprietary email program, Lord they might knows. have a spot that displays that for you. Who knows? It doesn't Who knows? show up on mine. What you do on your Outlook, you say you want a preview um, view, and that gives you one the first line or whatever. Oh, okay. Thank so you. as you look at them, you can see that instead of just just the subjects. Okay. I don't want them to see that. I want them to look at the whole thing. Yeah, really. Okay, now we're going to go to this part here. Um, design email, because we talked about two from subject. Now we're going to, this is the fun part, right? The content, design the email. And so we click that button and it takes us here. Oh dear. <laughs> design the content for your email. Okay. <laughs> well, one of the things we do is we select a template. It gives us all sorts of stuff and different ways of, of, of creating what our, what our email will look like. And you notice the first one is showcase your products. I told you that this was for business, right? Um, but if we go, if we scroll down, we get this next, and these are our basic templates. And Ilga very kindly told us to select one column. And then I drew a big circle around it so I could find it. Okay, so we select one column. And then it opens up, <clears throat> says it's time to design your email. Cool beans. Now, each section, oops, get back on there. Each section of this, you open up a little bit more. We, we, these are the different um, components of our email system. And I, oh, I've, I've talked about that later. Um, and logo is one of the things that you can add in, and I don't quite remember how, but here we go, Ilga has. So, and whenever I create an email anymore, it immediately shows up when I do it, AAW of Oregon. So there's a way to go in there when it says logo and you add, you upload your logo. If you do not have your AAW uh, branch logo, Ilga, are you still here? I'm here. Is it still possible to get your individual branch logos from a national? Yes. Okay. Uh, go, go to the MSD. And there is on the left hand side a place to click for the logos. Okay. Okay. So you still can get your branch logo. That's good to know. Thank you very much. Um, and, and so you can add that there. And then da, 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 da. And then we, we can design our logo. So we've got the logo and then you click in this section. They're all different sections that we're building one on top of another. Okay, and they're, they're different kinds of content. For example, there's a text session and there's a box text. Brand, Randa and Nancy are really good at this box text. They make a very pretty background and then the box, the text shows up and oh, it's gorgeous. I never remember to do that, but they, they, they do a great job. So usually I just use text and that's what this looks like. And so the fun part is, is that when you're creating an email, this is what it looks like and this is where you type. And I always forget and I try and type over <laughs> here and, and it doesn't work. It's quite annoying. And so you type it and it shows up over here. Well, it shows up both places, but this side, the left side is what it will look like pretty much as the email itself. Whereas over here, it may, you know, look a little bit different. 
Okay. So, and when it says here, it's time to design your email. And if you see stuff like this, you want to, you want to highlight it and type over it. Cause you don't want that to go in your email. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. saying, right. And so you only have to do that once though and realize you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of experience. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, um, and this one is, this is how they make the pretty background color. It's how the, you do your page and you can create a pretty background color. And I don't quite remember how to do this because I use the same template over and over and over again. So I'm going back to this and again, text, box text. You can make a pretty background. You can just put an image into this specific section. And when you want to use a, a, a block of text or a block of box text, you grab this little icon and you drag it over to this section where you want it to go. A button, you'll notice I create buttons um, in my email so that you can click the button. Although I don't, don't always use their button. I have my own buttons. But anyway, you can create buttons from there image and text. You can have a whole bunch of images together. Divider. I do use dividers a lot. It divides the different sections of my email from each other. And again, it here is time to design your email. And this is what you're going to want to know the most about. And so I turned this part. Oh, I love doing this with my pretty pins. I took this and highlighted it so that we could talk about this briefly, because this is how you manage your text. Remember the dear um, and first name, blah, 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 first name merch thing that we created? Well, here's where we can put it in. And so we, and I should have made a, a dear Nancy or something. So you would say dear, and then hit the merge tags and find the one that says first name comma or exclamation mark or whatever you want to put then hit a return and then start typing your content here you can make make your font the way you want it or you can make styles if you want headers headings and i don't know how to do all this stuff this is where you control the color of your text this is where you can highlight your text this is where you do the you know the just right you know left left justified center right justified bold, italic, underline you don't want to use very much on your email. Why is that? If you're going to do links, you don't want to. And generally, you don't want to do it anyway, because people think it's a link. And so if you have an underline in your email, and it's not a link, they're going to email you and say your link is broken. <laughs> you're not even underlining the name of books anymore. Well, hon, huh, that's because we don't underline because it was supposed to be italicized, but typewriters didn't do italics. Right. Under, the names of books are italicized, so you don't need to underline them. Um, and so if you want to do the clever thing is you don't want to put, see, now if I've got, let me show you. I've got all these wonderful um, links here for like, how do I create a Facebook page? I could put in an email how to create a Facebook page. Oh, how do I get this out of here now? <laughs> there. Um, and if I try to get this, come on, move. Oh, Nancy. While you're moving, I thought I'd mention, uh, you know, those th these uh, commands here are just like on, on Microsoft Word. So that's, that's not too difficult to use. I, I thought I'd mention something about you alluded to using a button. And, and so with a button, you probably want to go over here and use to have your button link to something. Well, I'm so gonna talk about button. linking and, okay. and I wanna talk about it in a little more depth than just a button. That, that Facebook um, link are all those links that I showed you, HTTPS, all that. You don't wanna put those in your email. So you highlight, uh, you say a word like click here and you highlight the here, you hit this button right here, which is to create a hyperlink. And then it opens up a window and, it, and you say, it, you have some choices. And one of the choices is a web page. 
And then you just paste that huge HTTPS blah, 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 blah in that. And then you save it. And then when people go and click that cute little here, it takes them to the web page. That's, that's much why we love in Word. Yeah. That's why we love using something like MailChimp. Because it doesn't clutter your email with, you know, a 10, 10 feet long uh, URL. Now, you can also do this. I do this for email because one of the drop downs under this link button is for email. And so in my in my emails to you at the bottom, if you have any questions, you know, email, you know, go here. And it's my email address. If you open that up, it opens an email immediately with my as the the to and yours as the from and you can type an email to me right from there and then yes with a button of any kind now i am creating my own buttons i don't use their button anymore because you know i want mine to look like i want them to look um so for example in um the email this click here to register um, is a button I made. And so I just inserted it as a image, which is what this little box is inserting pictures, mm -hmm. which is my favorite one. I know Randa, you're really good at the beautiful text one, but I like pictures. Mm -hmm. And so this button is a link that I, all I had to do was highlight this image, just this, you know, highlight this button. And then it takes, and then hit this and put the URL that I want the button to go to. And then that button then will take us to the registration page. And Margaret Drummond, bless her heart, can't see my emails and I need to go in and give her a text only version and go into MailChimp and say, only send her the text version. Well, she said she can't see the buttons. And so I saw somebody else that I got an email from had put this, can't see the button to register, click here. So I put that there too. So this link here is also a link to the registration page. So on this, I, I, I put three links now for each, each one of our classes. <laughs> and I'm changing this to a blue instead of red because that's what you're used to with links. This is a link to the registration page for, the, for this session, for the funds. This is a link to the funds. This is a link to the funds registration. So that's how I do all of the links. And then Back up and tell them about the two, um, how you do two columns. The two columns hmm, hmm, is a choice. Let me see. I'll have to go into MailChimp. On content. I know, no, on that third one, whatever that third thing is. Uh huh? It, it, underneath what you have. Underneath what I have. Under here? Oh, yeah, these yeah. three things. Settings. Settings. Well, you talk about it because I don't under remember how they work. Okay, in settings, it will say, do you want one column or two columns? Oh, right, and yes. Then with that, you can have a skinny column, either one of the places, or a fatter column. So that can come in real handy. Yes, and actually with this one, I create, um, there's a way to create um, a picture on one side and text on the other side. Um, mm, yeah. And it's a... Uh, it's not in the settings. It's in the, this, I think. I think it's. Um, no, it's no. an image and text. Image it's and in, text. Image, image and text. Yeah. And that asks me, where do you want stuff? Yeah. And so on this one, I put them side by side. And on this one, I put them side by side. And then this is actually its own text box right here because I couldn't do the side by side right. and then have this bleed aground. It would have just been a column and it would look funny. This one is just um, an image and then the text under it. And this is the side by side again. One thing I didn't put in the, um, in the um, PowerPoint, I wanted to share with you I need to take out one of them. I have it in here twice, so that's good. Um, you are receiving this email because you are a member of AAUW of Oregon. 
most email marketing is done on a permission basis so that if you get emailed by a business, you have somewhere asked or uh, given them permission to email you. And often it's in a little box where it says sign up for our something or other and you give them their name and your email address. That is permission based. We haven't done it that way here in AAW because we have uploaded all those people. If we were a business uploading just anybody we wanted to, that would not be okay. Um, so I am letting people know down here, you are receiving this email because you are a member of AAUW of Oregon. And I think that I- I well, dues paying for sure. So yes. that- <laughs> Yes. I, I mean, dues paying is an in- Yes. Yeah. And you also need to have a mailing address. And I didn't want to use my email, my personal address. I don't have a post office box anymore for my business. So uh, I'm still using George's. Thank you very much. Um, and then, of course, you can update your preferences or unsubscribe from this list down here at the bottom. So I just wanted to make sure that we were aware that I, I twice now, I really mean it. You are receiving this email because you're a member of AUW of Oregon, by golly. <laughs> Do you want to mention the Facebook icons and so forth? The Facebook icons, I don't know if they really work. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I do. put them in one time and I thought they worked and then I tested them and they didn't. So where does it take us? It took me to my Facebook page. Well, that's how helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you would like to probably make a template so that you can use the same format over and over for your branding. And in that template, you can actually make those link to the proper place you would. Well, like. I do have a template, and I just don't think that I've fixed well, it. I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure, Nancy, you're perfect. But no, you know. <laughs> I do have a template, and I tried them. I tried them once, and and they worked. And then the next time I went and tried them, they didn't work, and now they don't work again. So what if, the heck? If you if you start over, uh, and those kind of come on the on the blank uh, form they actually just go to the main uh, Facebook page, for example, uh, and they don't go to where you want it to be. Well, actually they took me to the MailChimp Facebook page. Okay. Now, you can put in your own link. I mean, yes. you put in at least. Yes. <laughs> but I think it's in the footer. Yes, it just, I did that. It didn't, it didn't want to. Um, so, so as, as, as Ilga had mentioned, and I mentioned, you can have templates and I didn't update this page. I don't know if it looks like this, but you'll have some templates that you can use. And, and, um, and here's the template for the colors. And here's a basic white template that AEW of Tiger uses or did use. Um, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And one thing I didn't add but it's up here somewhere. Let's see. No, no, no. Nancy, while you're looking, when you do the, your, your first email as such you're doing, can you then save that as a template? Yes, yes. That's, that's, that's how those You don't have there. to do the template and then do your email, but you could actually save the first, the one you do. Yeah. Okay. Make this, save it as a template. Yeah. So if you go under campaigns, um, and it'll show all the different campaigns. And this is one, I didn't know you couldn't delete one. Do you know how to delete a campaign, Randa? Because I was playing yes, with one earlier. Click in the front of it. Hmm? You'll click in the front of it right there. Mm -hmm. Click it. Oh, the button. Oh, uh -huh. I love you. Thank you. And you have to. But then type delete with capitalized. Yes, I know. I, I know how to delete. I just couldn't. You little buggers. Okay, thank you so much. Yay. So uh, this is the Tech Top um, reminder I sent the other night. And so I'm going to just make another one the next time I have to send a Tech Top reminder. And, and then it will start. And then I can go in and edit right here. And I'll name it the new thing that I'm going to name it. It just made it a copy, right. so I'll edit the name and call it whatever the new one's going to be. 
we're going to actually do a tech talk in January about Instagram. Caitlin O'Donnell, our band co-president, uh, does a lot of Instagram, and she's going to talk to us about what she's doing for AUW with Instagram. Um, so you can save yourself a lot of work by replicating. And then because we don't have a um, paid account, I can't schedule this. You have to be a paid account to be able to schedule ahead into the future. So I'll just say finish later. So when it comes time for me to actually send that out, it'll be here in my drafts and I can finish it later. Or now that Randa reminded me how to do it, I can delete it. So replicate, that's, that's my favorite thing, except that's probably why I didn't notice I have you are a member of AUW and that's why you're getting this twice. Okay, so um, here's an example of Tiger Branch. Click here for minutes from the May 7th meeting because they don't really want to have to put those in the email. So click here and you can upload those minutes as a PDF into MailChimp or you can have them as a um, in Google Docs and put the link to the Google Doc here wherever you want. Here's another example of Tigered Branch. And I didn't put any more uh, anything. Um, but I did want to comment that, you know, you don't have to put your email on here. You can use the drop down and make a link and just say email and highlight email and make that the, the link and it'll create the email for you. And I think that's all we've got on here. Wow, any questions? Do you. No. you have the option of sending out a trial oh yeah 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 for yourself i thought i yeah here thank you i had it <laughs> so here you go your campaign is ready to send and if you want to send it you would hit send but me i send myself a test email so that's right here send test email and i then you put in the email address you know if i want somebody else to to read it i'll send it uh, put their email address in there and even give some instructions on, I, I please proofread this for me. Um, but I test all my links um, when I send it to myself. I make sure the links go where I want them to go before I send it out to everyone. So thank you. Thank you, Elena. I bypassed that, link, that slide. I do that, but before I even do that, I click on the, the email right there where mm -hmm. it says AUW, and then you're seeing what you're going to send. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to keep sending it to your, yeah, you can click right there. Well, I can't because this is, uh, this is not there. Right, right. <laughs> I know. But yeah, but you it'll, it'll pull the email in. Yeah. I have a question on, on the uh, content or style page. There was a little anchor. What does that do? Left that one. That's an anchor tag. Um, for example, good, good. That's an anchor tag. We'll show you. These links here take me down the page to whatever it says here. AUW funds. Here's the one about AUW funds. Tech talk takes me to the tech talk one. These are anchor tags. Okay. And so in my MailChimp, this little thing here is what I'm anchoring. And this has a little anchor on it when in my edit screen. Not This is an email, so it won't be in here. But in my edit screen in MailChimp, it has a little anchor here. And when I go up here then, and I highlight this whole line. Oh, that is nice. wow. I hit this anchor, and it is. wants to know, I, and I have to name them. And it wants to know where it's going to go. I can't remember. I've only done this like twice, so I can't remember exactly, but that's what that does. So it's like a link within your email. It is. You can do different kinds of anchors. That's the only one I know how to do right now. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, how thank you for different? asking. How is it different from just a link? I mean, or is it just, it looks like a link to me. It is, Maybe. but the link, this link here. Yeah only gives me the option of sending an email, sending, um, putting oh. in the web page, oh, and okay. Okay. I don't know what else. Okay, this yeah. takes you on that same page down. Okay, yeah. gotcha. I love that feature. I found it by Googling it. Very Just cool. saying. 
Nancy, how yes. would you suggest using MailChimp in conjunction with a newsletter? Could you use it like an abbreviated newsletter or would you have to upload your newsletter as a PDF and then use MailChimp to highlight pages? You could do either, but you know, Aranda and Nancy do a wonderful job. Oh, where did I put those? Um, uh, Eugene Lane does the same thing. We send a MailChimp email with some of the content and graphics. And then if there's detail that we want to link to, then we put the links within the MailChimp. And it's been really popular. People really like it. They, yeah. it's, um, it's just visually more appealing rather than just you know linking to a full PDF of the newsletter. Um, and it just, it, it. Yeah, but it, here's the thing. In MailChimp, it wouldn't be a PDF of the newsletter. You would actually right. create the newsletter in, exactly. in MailChimp. Exactly, right. Yeah, now, you create here's, the here's yeah. a different opinion. When I get emails that tell me to click the link to, to go read it, I don't. <laughs> I, I, I say, if you can't put it on the, the email, I'm not going there. So, so you have to have good luck with your people liking that. Personally, I don't like it. I get that all the time and I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not clicking. Yeah. You can't put it I, in email, I don't know that reading. people necessarily like all of the links, but they like the look and the feel of the way it, uh, the newsletter looks in MailChimp because it's got all the graphics I think more colorful and when I do a link, it's because not everybody's going to look there. I mean, yeah. we only have a few people in the book group. So I will link the big one page of, of all the books we're going to read the rest of the year. So it'll yeah. say that. So only the few people that want to go there will go there. Right. But, and, and if I put birthdays in, which is a different branch that I'm in in California, I will put that in a, uh, with a link because not everybody cares about the birthdays. But if, if it's anything I really want everybody to see, I don't do it under a link. Good, yeah. And I can, Ilga sent me some of your really gorgeous um, e, uh, emails and I can't find them. Thank you. Gee, and then I also why. make them into a PDF afterwards because I do keep them on the news, on, on the um, website. website? Mm. Okay. How do you do that, Randa? I, co I copy and paste it into a Word document, and then I make that Word document into a PDF. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. So you copy and paste the There's whole more than one way. The page. Page. Okay. Thank you for the advice. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I can't find them. Sorry. And we're getting so, I mean, this has been forever. Um, any <laughs> other questions? Thank you so much. That's great. Any other questions about this whole chimpy thing? And you do this monthly, the same <laughs> program? So yes. the 12th time we watch it, we'll get it? <laughs> <laughs> or, or repeat it in three months when we've tried it, we've made yeah, mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be on YouTube. YouTube. Watch it. Watch it, watch it. You can contact Randa. You can contact if, me. You can contact we're Ilga. Now, we're going to be here in another three or four months. Going to fall out the back. That's right. You guys have taught us a lot. Anything else for the good of the order? You guys are really troopers hanging in there. My goodness. You saved the good stuff for last. That's right. <laughs> for only the special people. Yes. Well, thank you, Nancy. Thank I'm you. Going. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank and you. I will get, I'm not going to edit too much of this because I hate looking at myself. So I may just post it the way it is. Um, and, and you guys can just kind of wade through. Actually, what I'm going to do, this is a YouTube tip. I didn't know this. I don't watch so much YouTube, um, but you can actually um, put sections and lists down in the description of YouTube of where different parts start in the video. Like, oh. you know, if I start talking about, I didn't know you could do that. So I didn't either. Yeah. So I just learned that. So I'll do that to, to all, to these tech ones, because, you know, you may not want to listen to me ramble on about the different other things, but here's how you can get fast to the other part. Okay. Okay. Everybody be safe. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you Happy all for coming and for participating and uh, especially, oh, Ellen. No, I'm saying goodbye. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay bye everyone I'm holding it up there it's so funny <laughs> Just, <laughs> he's so tired oh gosh <laughs> hold it up <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. Bye-bye.